Resident Evil 5 is like a vegan zombie. The vegan zombie has a desire for flesh and meat locked into its very DNA. It has the appearance of a rotting husk, slouching towards its prey with one goal, to chomp on your skull. But underneath its moulding brain, it wants to push past its fleeing victims and instead scoop up a healthy salad. Resident Evil 5 has a desire to scare its player, to give you chills, thrills, a creeping unease, a sense of panic. It slathers itself in blood and guts, but it's uncertain about what its primary goal is. It claims it wants to terrify you, but it shoves horror fans aside in favour of a desert military shooter. Both are oxymorons, impossible, confused about what they're supposed to be. And I have a soft spot for Resident Evil 5. I had a blast playing it when it first came out, drizzling some occasional tension into its bang bang blast time, but its atmosphere was destined to fail when Capcom splattered Resident Evil 4 but Africa up on its whiteboard. Resi 5's biggest issue isn't that its opening is reductive like with Resident Evil 3 make, but that it's bland because it doesn't know what it wants to be. People slap the term action horror on reviews of it, but that's such a contradictory phrase that it's the vegan zombie of buzzwords. Game Rant lists Alien Isolation as an example of this. Alien Isolation. If Alien Isolation is an action horror, then the fucking term has lost all meaning. Check yourself, Zach Gass. Resident Evil 5 is a vegan zombie. Let's look at how the opening embodies that. This is the first 10 minutes. Five's opening has a lot of parallels to Four's, like Capcom were slowly ticking off a checklist as they go. Our main character is in a foreign country. It opens with music indigenous to the setting. There's a standoff with a humanoid enemy who seems to simply not zombified in an enclosed space, followed closely by a wide open area where the player needs to handle waves and waves of enemies, one of which is specifically dangerous while the clock runs down. But unfortunately, Resi 5 learns the wrong lessons from Resident Evil 4. The opening minute features a masked stranger looking over a meditative Magini, our main enemies in the game. The slow, tender camera shots encircling this pairing draw attention to how voluntary a lot of this feels. It appears that the Magini has willingly undergone his monstrous transformation, but it's intercut with the faster cuts of the BSAA jeeps speeding towards the city in a hurried panic working against a timer. As the Magini begins to feel the virus take over his body, he reaches out to the stranger and grabs her, gasping for help, clearly having changed his mind now that he's beginning to transform. But the mysterious stranger, dressed in a pointed mask reminiscent of old plague masks, rips their arm away before leaving him to evolve. The opening is both vegan and zombie. The slow, pensive tone of the Magini changing keeps being attacked by the armed soldiers in their jeeps, issuing orders to each other already on high alert before Resident Evil 5's setting can even be fully established. The music playing, titled Prey, does a solid enough job of setting up that we are in Africa due to the tone and cultural sound being used, but Prey is indicative of a wider issue with our African setting. Prey, as a song, is in Swahili, just like the language the Magini speak. Resident Evil 4 opened with a lyricless flamenco song, focusing on vocalising rather than the Spanish language to keep things abstract. Prey doesn't. It has lyrics, both in Swahili and further into the song, English. Where Resident Evil 4 set itself in an ambiguous, unnamed, unrealistic depiction of Spain to translate our fear of the other, Resident Evil 5 tries to ground itself. The town of Kajuju, whilst being fictional, is given a homogenised identity in keeping with how the West views Africa. A newer yet impoverished cityscape, vast screams of desert, marshlands where the Endopaya tribe have built huts and fight you with bows and arrows, oil fields, the game on the whole glues together numerous scenes from real life Africa to create a geography that Westerners would recognise. You only need to look at interviews with Jiro Tawuka where he states that Black Hawk Down of all things was an inspiration for the game to see how Africa's presentation here is. It's muddled. 
And no, before you start, I'm not talking about racism here. I don't feel qualified to give an opinion on it. I'm talking about how the presentation of this setting undercuts Resident Evil 5's attempts to recreate that fear of the other. Resident Evil 4 fell out of time, out of sync with real life Spain, right down to the currency being used. You'd find pesetas on enemies and shacks, but Spain hadn't used pesetas for six years when the game came out. Resident Evil 5 uses Nigerian Naira, a real world currency currently being used in Nigerian regions today. It's the perfect example of how so much of Resident Evil 5 tries to put down roots in an Africa which, while not completely realistic, is at least familiar to us because of the movie, TV shows and yes, games we interact with. As a result, there is no fear of the other here, not like how Resident Evil 4 approached it. As the BSAA agents roll out of their jeeps, we hear Captain Deshant report in that the area is secure and our scene cuts to black opening up on some rolling African plains and Chris Redfield, now the size of a fridge, driving towards Kajuju. His inner monologue fills us in on the socio-political landscape of Kajuju. The area is destabilised, the introduction of bioterrorism has caused the local government to fall, and it's a free-for-all. But Chris isn't the real problem here. It's the little, living society we're seeing in the cutscene. The people of Kajuju are going about their business, they are chatting, attending a market, carrying water home, we are seeing the area be populated with everyday chores before everything goes to hell. Heck, even later when Chris approaches the gate to enter the autonomous zone, there's a guard that stops him and Sheva heavily armed with an AK-47. Not only is there a local civilian population, but there are armed forces who might be able to help out later. Which leaves us with our most important first impression. We're not isolated like Leon was in Spain, stars were in the Spencer Mansion, or Leon and Claire were in an apocalyptic Raccoon City. We're not alone. We're starting surrounded by hundreds of potential allies, so the tension we felt in other titles simply isn't here. As this curious choice begins to descend on the player, the game moves swiftly along, introducing Sheva Alomar's arse to us. Now, this might seem a little lewd and dehumanising, but the game is actually foreshadowing the quality of her partner AI. One thing that Resident Evil 5 has over its predecessors is the introduction of an explicit theme and character path for our main character. When Sheva references that she'll be Chris's new partner, it clearly triggers something in him and we flash to a disturbing image for longtime series fans. Partner. Jill Valentine is dead, and this has been weighing on Chris for a long time. It's a brilliant little mystery to keep the game chugging along in the background, and introducing it here before we even have control passed over to us presents it as an important point to note, later making the Jill Valentine reveal even more poignant. It's heavy handed, sure, but you've got to commend Resident Evil for at least trying to take its character writing seriously by the fifth mainline entry. We are five minutes in before gameplay is handed over. The game camera closes in on Chris, tighter here than it will be later when we're armed and ready to kick ass. It's an effective means of keeping Chris feeling vulnerable while we walk up this street. The locals mind their own business until we pass, suddenly stopping what they're doing and turning their attention on us to just stare. A small cluster of Magini bluntly beat the crap out of something alive and squirming in a woven sack and pause when we're near, toying with their weapons and you feel a tonal shift in the autonomous zone, that here there be monsters. But it's all undermined by Kirk, chipping away in our ear, providing coordinates for us to follow and reassuring Chris and the player that not only is he just a quick hop skip away, but so is the BSAA Alpha team we saw at the beginning. Rendezvous. Briefed, Mission, Alpha Team, all terminology which never retreats from the experience, and this is the first real moment that Resident Evil 5's pretense of strong organic horror is replaced with little military shooterisms. Even though Chris isn't in stars anymore, this is a military operation, and where Resident Evil 1 took its action aesthetic and ripped it apart in its first moments, Resident Evil 5 sews it together, but stitches around the spooks. Now I tell you what, what let the squad when you want black guy? Okay, but I want...
Uh, see, this scene should be terrifying. It really should be the moment that the game stops pretending to be an action-packed fighter fest and instead falls into the foreboding tension which made Resident Evil 4 so engaging. There's an air raid siren signaling danger, someone barks orders in Swahili over the radio, suddenly everyone is… gone. But because we know there's a busy armed populace just 50 feet behind us, and because Kirk and Alpha Team are just over the ridge, and worst of all, because we saw this scene in Resident Evil 4, it doesn't work and is tonally… confusing. It's a vegan zombie. Chris and Sheva meeting their contact in the upcoming butcher shop is unnecessary and should have been cut from the opening altogether. Chris notes that they really roll out the carpet for us Americans to try and reinforce how out of place Chris is in this foreign land, but so far Africa has seemed lively and welcoming and in keeping with our expectations. There's nothing otherly about this region. We've seen it before in, in Black Hawk Down, Tears of the Sun, bloody machine gun preacher for goodness sake. So the delivery doesn't strike the same church bell that Resident Evil 4 did. Picking up our gun, we notice two more conflicts. This tutorializes the inventory system, specifically that the game does not pause when equipping new gear, which will make every combat scenario much more potent and tense later. A rumbling, groaning track plays as we explore the butcher shop and note every grisly detail, blood-soaked slabs of meat buzzing with flies in the heat. The interior of the shop is a much tighter space than the vast open street we just marched down, setting expectations of some claustrophobic horror to come. But the butcher shop and the alley outside are also covered in ammunition and healing items and money and all sorts of useful resources. We haven't even met our first enemy yet. By the time you get to the foot of the stairs and hear that terrified scream, you're lugging around enough ammo to kill a boss. Our introduction to our first real enemy is where our first 10 minutes comes to an end. Two Magini pin down a local and force feed him a parasite. As he begins to change, we see a hint of the monstrous capabilities our foes will show off later, the mouth folding outwards, a glint of sharp, razor-like teeth. In an effort to simplify our first combat encounter, keeping the enemy population to one, the Magini run away from Chris and Sheva, forcing a steady retreat which ultimately hinders how aggressive we expect them to be later. Why are they running away? Are they scared? The Ganados never ran away and the Magini will never retreat after this point. Aside from that, this is a really juicy scene, and I mean that in the most literal sense. The wet, slippery, retching sounds the Magini makes while he drools and spits, gagging on the parasite, are beautifully indulgent, sounding like the sloshing of grease or fat while it sizzles from a frying pan. Man, I'm hungry. Chris, reaching out and touching him for a second, asking if he's okay, is dumb. Sure, he should know better after his time dealing with bioweapons, but there's such an earnestness to it that a player is likely to forgive his denseness. He's developed a hero complex since the Spencer Mansion. At its core, his mission is about helping people. He's not ready to put a gun to the Magini's temple just yet. The cutscene transitions from seeing our enemy start to charge at us to panicking at his wild rabid rush in gameplay form. Resident Evil 5 has been slow enough in game feel up until now, so it doesn't need to give us a slurring zombie or ganado to introduce us to its tension, just a charging Magini to kick its doors open and introduce us to how much faster the gameplay will be. But because the game has loaded us up with so much shootman gun ammo, the player can rattle off as many bullets as they like, or better yet, they can step aside and let Sheva have all the fun. Though, considering the impressions the game's left in us by this point, it's likely he was aiming for the fruit anyway. Thanks for watching, and a quick question from me. In the build-up to Resident Evil 8, I'm going to be spending an afternoon with a pal of mine trying to explain the entire Resident Evil story to him so he's prepared for the new game. We've been thinking of recording our chat in a silly one-off podcast format. Is that something you'd be interested in? Drop a comment below and let me know. Oh, and if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and as always, take care.